నమస్కారం యు ఆర్ వాచింగ్ డిఎస్టీ ఎడ్యుటెక్ ఛానల్ అండ్ దిస్ ఇస్ దివాకర్ ఇన్ దిస్ వీడియో యు ఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు హ్యావ్ మోర్ ఇన్ఫర్మేషన్ రిగార్డింగ్ ద సెవెన్ స్టాండర్డ్ సైన్స్ ఫస్ట్ లెసన్ దట్ ఈస్ న్యూట్రిషన్ ఇన్ ప్లాంట్స్ డియర్ స్టూడెంట్స్ ఇన్ సిక్స్ స్టాండర్డ్ వీ హ్యావ్ లర్న్ దాట్ ఆల్ ద లివింగ్ ఆర్గానిజమ్స్ ఆన్ అర్త్ రిక్వైర్స్ ఫుడ్ and we have also learned that why food is necessary for us because it gives energy it helps in growth and repairing of our body and it keeps our body active and also it is needed for good health and it maintains the metabolism and waste management for these things we need food and also we we have come across about the components of food that is nutrients and nutrients are of different types they are carbohydrates proteins vitamins and minerals and next it is fats and after that it is dietary fibers lastly it is water so these are all the nutrients of food the organisms which are living on earth for example a cow which is a herbivore and a tiger which is a carnivore and a dog which is an omnivore and also the plants they take food and utilized in the body the mode of taking food and utilization by the body is called as nutrition the mode of nutrition in which organisms make food themselves from simple substances are called as autotrophic nutrition we know that the plants make their own food so they are called as autotrophs as they prepare their own food they are called as autotrophs and all other living organisms depend on plants for their food that's why they are called as heterotrophs now i have a question that even the carnivorous animals and the omnivorous depend on plants for their food come let's get the answer for this question take an example of carnivore that is a lion which is depending upon the herbivore that is a deer the deer in turn depends on the grass or the plants so in turn we can say that even the herbivores and carnivores and omnivores depending on plants and let's see how do plants make their food before that i have a question do you think that the human beings can prepare their own food yes or no just think about this i'll try to give you the answer at the end of this video so that your doubt will be clear along with my doubt okay before going to see how the plants make their food let's see some words which are very important for example first one cells okay you have seen that the buildings are built by the main components that is bricks sand and cement so these are all the smallest component of the buildings in the same way the body of all the living organisms are made of tiny units so these tiny units are called as cells so you should be clear that these are all the tiny units of living organisms body and next word it is stomata stomata these are all the tiny pores which are present on the surface of the leaves so these are called as stomata the tiny pores present on the surface of the leaves are called as stomata the next word is guard cells so the guard cells are those cells which are surrounding the stomata next important word is chlorophyll you have come across this word in the 6th standard itself isn't it the green pigment which is present in the leaves is called as chlorophyll due to which all the leaves look green color okay here you can see the cross section of leaves wherein the first marked part is chlorophyll you can see it is in green color and the next you can see it's a stomata which is opened and next part you can see it's guard cells and the last one you can see here it is vacuum so these are all the parts of uh, leaves which we have just discussed and the next main thing is photosynthesis the process of synthesizing food 
by the plants is called as photosynthesis. Come, let's see how the process of photosynthesis takes place in plants. We know that the leaves are the food factories of plants. When the sunlight falls on these leaves, the energy which is present in the sunlight is captured and utilized in the process of photosynthesis. The chlorophyll which is present in the leaves capture or absorb the light energy from the sunlight and is used in the process of photosynthesis. So the main function of chlorophyll is absorbing the light energy. And after this, the pores which are present on the leaves. You know that the pores are called as stomata. These stomata absorb the carbon dioxide which is present in the atmosphere and utilized in the process of photosynthesis. So this is the second step of photosynthesis. And the third step is the roots of the plant absorb the water and minerals and these water and minerals are transported to leaves for the preparation of food. Okay, let's sum up all these steps again. When the sunlight falls on the leaves, the energy which is present in the sunlight is captured by the chlorophyll and after that, the carbon dioxide which is present in the atmosphere is absorbed by the stomata. Next, water and minerals are absorbed by the roots and transferred to the leaves. By making use of all these things, leaves synthesizes carbohydrates and will be stored in the form of starch and oxygen released to atmosphere. Let's see this process in equation. We discussed that the carbon dioxide which is present in the atmosphere is absorbed by the stomata and after that the water and the minerals which are present in the earth will be absorbed by the roots of the plants. In the presence of sunlight, the energy is utilized by the chlorophyll. The food is synthesized in the form of carbohydrate and oxygen is released to atmosphere. So this is the process of photosynthesis. Why the name photosynthesis? Photo means light synthesis means to prepare. That's why this process is called as photosynthesis. I asked you one question that human beings can prepare food. Is it possible or not possible? So the answer is not possible. Now you might know the answer because we don't have chlorophyll to absorb the light energy which will help in the preparation of food. But our skin can synthesize vitamin D. Now I have one more question that whether the photosynthesis takes place only in leaves or in some other parts of the plants. The answer is yes. You know why? Because even in green stem and green branches, photosynthesis takes place. You might have seen this plant which is showing now. This plant is called as cactus. Here the leaves are converted into spines, needle-like structure. So here the photosynthesis doesn't take place. So the photosynthesis takes place in green stem. And in garden you might have seen so many leaves of different colors. Here the red, brown and yellow. These colored pigments mask the green pigments so that this color will be highlighted but the green color will be there and there photosynthesis takes place. Do you think all the plants are autotrophs? We know that animals depend on other animals and plants for their food. In the same way, the plants also depend on other plants for their food. In the picture, you can see that a yellow colored wiry branched plant which is called as cascuta. In this cascuta, chlorophyll is absent. So it grows by twining around the stem and branches of other plants and takes ready-made food from that plant. The plant which gives ready-made food to cascuta is called as host and the cascuta which derives ready-made from food from the host is called as parasite. So this is the other type of nutrition which is called as parasitic nutrition. 
I have one more question. Are we, the human beings, and all the animals are a kind of parasites? Just think. Okay. Next, here you can see the plant. This type of plants eat insects as they don't get required nutrients from the soil where they grow. So these are called as insectivorous plants. For example, this is called as picture plant. And the second one it is dew plant. And the third one it is snap trap. These are all the example for insectivorous plants. You can see how they trap the insects in the video. So here it is a snap trap trapping the insects for their required nutrients. Here in the video the picture plant is trapping the insects for their nutrients. Now you are looking at the picture of mushroom. It derives its food from dead and decaying objects. In the same way you might have seen a black spot in bread which is kept for some time. So these are called as fungi. These derives their food from dead and decaying objects. So this type of nutrition is called as saprotrophic nutrition. These fungus are called as saprotrophs. One more special thing about these fungi is the fungal spores are generally present in air. When these spores fall on wet and warm things, they germinate. Due to which you might have noticed that the white cloths which are wet will become black spotted and the coat which is kept for a long time will be white spotted. These are all because of fungi. Some of the organisms live together by sharing food and shelter. So this type of nutrition is called as symbiosis. For example, fungi lives in the roots of some plants. So here the plant gives nutrients to the fungi and the fungus provides water and some nutrients to the plant. So the symbiosis. See in the picture you can see the white patches, they are called as lichen, which arises from algae. It has a, a symbiotic nutrition type with fungi. The lichen which has chlorophyll in it, it prepares food and it supplies food to the fungi. In turn, the fungi provides shelter, water and nutrients. So this is the symbiotic nutrition with lichen and fungi. We know that in the process of photosynthesis, the plants absorb nutrients from earth, which in turn leads to decrease or decline of the minerals like nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. You might have seen that the farmers spreading fertilizers or manures to their field. Why? This is to enrich the nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium in the earth so that to get the good yield and it happens naturally also when the farmer grows the dicotyledons like gram, moon, beans and peas the bacteria which lives in the root nodules of these dicotyledons called as rhizobium it fixes the nitrogen from atmosphere to the earth so that declined nutrients are enriched to get the good yield by the farmers. So the rhizobium is farmer friendly bacteria. So now let's recapitulate all the nutrition types in plants. First of all they are autotrophs as they make their own food. Nextly they are heterotrophs because even they depend on other plants. The other uh, nutrition types are parasitic nutrition, symbiotic nutrition, insectivorous nutrition and saprotrophs nutrition. So that's all for this lesson here. Now let's recapitulate all the things from the beginning. At the beginning of the lesson, we saw that all the organisms living on earth requires food. After this topic, we saw that the importance of food. And next we saw the nutrients which are present in the food. After this, we also seen the meaning of nutrition. After the nutrition, we gone through the autotrophic nutrition wherein the plants are uh, under the category autotrophs. Other organisms other than plants are called as heterotrophs as they depend on other organisms for their food. After this, we discussed about the photosynthesis process wherein the chlorophyll absorbs the light energy from the sunlight and 
water and minerals are absorbed by the roots and carbon dioxide which is taken by the stomata and the food is prepared in the form of carbohydrates and oxygen is released to atmosphere so this is the photosynthesis process and after this we saw other modes of nutrition in plants like cascuta having parasitic nutrition and after this we saw that insectivorous plants wherein they acquire nutrition from insects and next mushroom having saprotrophic nutrition and after this type of nutrition we saw that the a symbiotic nutrition in alga and fungus at the end of the lesson we saw how the nutrients are replenished into the soil when they are used by the plants so this is the lesson here i conclude thank you very much for watching this video and please subscribe my channel and press the bell icon